Greetings, greetings. This is Body Culinary and here to share a Living Foods jam session. So look what I got here. I got a nice, big, healthy um, coconut. So this is a mature um, coconut with the hard shell with the face on it, right? <laughs> they also represent being hard-headed, right, and the ego. But it's a lot of um, water in this one. And um, as someone that really enjoys fresh, whole foods that I can still recognize, um, with everything intact, right? Um, yeah, this is a fresh, whole living food. So I really enjoy consuming food that I can still recognize um, as a food. So this is um, a staple. And um, yes, it contains lots of fat. Um, there have been some people um, in, over the decades that have been made to feel um, afraid, be afraid of the fat um, in coconut, but we can make a distinction um, with this fat. And one of them is this. Let me see if I can show you. In terms of a whole food, right? Because I can show you better than I can tell you. This is coconut oil. It's a cold press um, Belizean um, coconut oil. And then it hasn't been extracted um, with uh, chemical solvents, right? Because uh, oils can be extracted with chemicals, um, FYI, for those folks that may not have been aware. Um, this is cold press, and it hasn't, uh, it hasn't been used to extract the oil. So um, I'm aware that uh, many of the nutrients inside of um, fats in particular, that's one of the macronutrients, is very sensitive and volatile in the presence of heat and weight. So I'm going to get more of the nutritive value from the coconut or from any fat when it's not exposed to light and also to heat. So that's one of the benefits of cold pressed oils. And if anyone out there, uh, let me know if you're familiar with the different oils. They're, and fats, there are different types of fats. There are monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated fats, and saturated fats. So a good way to um, think of saturated fats, right now at um, room temperature, um, this is liquid, but if I were to put it inside of the refrigerator or if the temperature drops below a certain point, it will coagulate and it will get um, hardened, right? Um, the monounsaturated fats, um, those are fats that um, they become more cloudy. It's like a um, like an olive oil is a monounsaturated um, fat. So, well, that's the same thing. This is also a mono, excuse me, a monounsaturated fat. If I put it in a refrigerator, it's going to get solid, and then at room temperature, it's going to be liquid. So that would be like this, or if I um, had some um, olive oil. And interesting, you know, as I've um, shared with people, so folks may not have a frame of reference, but your palate will change over the years. So this is an example of um, a cold pressed olive oil. And I used to um, specialize and sell um, olive oil for a living, really um, expensive olive oils from Europe. And so there is um, something to be said for how the food has been um, processed if it's been tampered with, how it's been handled from the time that it goes from the whole food until the time it goes into the container. And so as far as your palate and your taste buds and what you're used to, the flavors and the taste and the textures you're used to, I used to love, love, love oil. Coming up with um, a lot of soul food that had lots of oil, sometimes even grease um, in it, um, tasted really good. But um, there was a lot of fat and fat to me in oil was kind of like gravy. You know, and I can make that distinction now. If you look around um, at a lot of folks, many of us have um, high cholesterol. Um, we eat a lot of fatty foods, and our bodies and our midsections are showing that we're eating in excess fat. So, one of the distinctions I want to make is between a whole food, where you can still still hear that um, water inside of it, so it has um, still has carbohydrates or sugars, natural sugars, not all. Carbs are not bad. It's that they're not beneficial if they've been highly processed and the water and the fiber and the nutrients have been taken out of them. So I really like to show visuals of food. And so my palate has changed. So interestingly, I used to love oil for the, the kind of um, the lubrication and the way it made the spices um, stick to the, the food and carried, as we say in the culinary world, um, carries um, flavor. But I lost my palate, which is amazing to me, for oil, where over time, and it's um, been years, the second particular stint um, on living foods over 10 years, and before that, eating very healthy, 
my palate has changed where I started to get turned off to um, oil. And some people may not be, be able to relate to that, but all that to say your palate can and will change over the years as you implement more whole foods. It makes a difference. It goes beyond taste. Your palate um, can be refined, cultivated. If you are a junk food junkie, um, I used to be addicted to junk food. I just really like to eat. Your palate can change over the years. The more you introduce whole foods, it starts to crowd out other things. And your palate, your taste for things will change. You'll start to notice the subtle tastes and notice the distinction between real food and processed food. Kind of like if you think of candy and we came up like now laters and Jolly Ranchers, the taste of the apple and the pineapple um, and those intense flavors and uh, being able to taste the intense flavors inside of um, not only sugars like pineapple um, and grapes and things like that. I and mean, think of the taste between the grape and the pineapple and a now later and in the fruit. Quite often, many uh, folks can prefer the taste of the artificial candy to the real fruit. And the real fruit, the real food is what has um, the nutrition, the fiber, the things that fortify the body to be able to deal with microorganisms that are toxic and viruses and, and cancer. Those are the things that fortify and build up the body and the immune system. The, um, the, the, the fl artificial flavorings that are not designed for the human body, um, and the foods that are fake that come in these little packages that are bursting with artificial flavor are not giving the body back. So they kind of just end at the tongue and the palate. The foods that you may love the taste, but they're not loving you back, if that makes sense. So um, drawing visuals so that you can see, I think is really helpful. The, distin the, the, the distinction between a whole food with its living water intact, because most of the body is what? Water, right? And um, processed foods, and for many years, many of us think of this as a health, a health food, um, but many of us are using entirely too much oil and are not aware of the serving size um, of oil. If I look on this, on the back of this, this says the serving size is one tablespoon or 15 milliliters. How many people, especially in the States, uh, are going to measure out one tablespoon of oil, particularly if they're, if they're cooking, if they're making salads, people usually will cook in the oil, add oil when they're finished, add oil to the dressing. In addition, if their protein source usually has a lot of fat in it. So many of us may not be aware that we're just taking in much more energy um, than we're burning off. So a serving size of this is only one tablespoon. But I like to say the food is talking to you. So um, if I'm using the whole food, that still has um, the water, the fiber, and the carbohydrates, and more flavor, this is gonna taste um, totally different. Hey, greetings, you're welcome. Um, you're going to get a whole nother experience from eating the whole food than eating the oil. So I would say, not to make anything bad or criminal, just to um, inspire you or encourage light bulbs to go off, right? Once you have these light bulbs and this information, which is technically not information, new information, but to present it in a way that draws pictures and parallels where you have another tangible experience with the food that makes um, if that makes any sense. So for example, right now, if I was to serve you um, something with this coconut, and I think I just grated some up, or extracted um, the milk and the water and the juice from this coconut, from some fresh um, coconuts, that would be a whole nother experience other than just drinking drinking or eating the oil. Most people also, when they really get to see what a serving size of oil is, it's kind of disappointing because you're like, that's all I get. So um, for uh, many of us that have extra adipose tissue around the waistline or a lot of um, fatty tissue, the unhealthy fat, right? There's subcutaneous fat and there's visceral fat. Um, subcutaneous is like right underneath um, the skin and visceral fat is usually wrapping around the organs. That's more dangerous. But the take home, without being too technical, is too much fat is too much fat. And we're less likely to overdo the fat if we're eating the whole food source. So how if that makes sense? I like to draw visuals and make things plain. And then once you have that information, if you are able to really get how to just work, just a learning curve, learning how to work with the fresh whole ingredients, so that your food um, is very beautiful, it's sustainable. You can eat this way anywhere you go, um, uh, in pretty inexpensively. Um, it, it becomes a no-brainer because the food is delicious. 
Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of dish liquid and soap to clean the dishes up. And I like to say it's not leaving waste on your waist, right? Because of, it's a whole food. It's very easy to overdo this. So let me see if I can find, because I can always show you better than I can tell you. So here's a measuring spoon. And when I'm preparing food like my grandma, I don't really need measuring spoons. And I used to wonder why my grandma Lou, she was like, grandma, you're not gonna use a me measuring spoon? She said, no child, ha 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 ha. She had a little chuckle. But now I can really articulate um, that she had been doing certain things in terms of making her coconut sweet bread and different things for so many years that she just didn't need measuring spoons. She knew a dash of this and a pinch of that. She knew how to balance. She had a good hand at seasoning and she knew how to balance out the flavors. And she also knew how much of what to put in to get a certain kind of result. So this is actually one, this is a, a tablespoon. So actually if I were to pour that out, that's actually not a lot. Now, what I do with my coconut cream? I think I just use it. I'm gonna about to make some more. But if I was to make the coconut cream, and even if I press it, if I or fresh coconut milk, because it's cream, there's milk. There's so much different food I can get from this um, this coconut. Um, it's going to still have some water, and it's going to have some sweetness. This doesn't have any kind of sweetness in it. So I would have to say, um, I if I use coconut um, oil or olive oil for the most part, I may put it on my skin to massage. Um, my skin. I just, my palate has like literally changed. And that's not something that people need to feel um, pressured about or overly anxious to get to a next phase. I think it's really wonderful. And what I found as effective in coaching people is to just be, start to become very, very observant of your level of satiation. Do you feel satisfied? Is the food appealing? Um, when you whip out your food, you know, um, you enjoy uh, the, the presentation when everybody else is whipping out um, their junk food or, or going to a, a quick spot to get some fast food. Um, are you enjoying your food? Is it visually appealing? Are you able to carry a busy um, lifestyle? And then almost the quality, how much water, if most of the body is water, um, are you getting um, from the food? right? How much of sweets, uh, how much sweet and natural sweetness, right? Not added sugars. How much benefit are you getting from the whole food? So um, this is a quarter cup. Some people are easily adding and a quarter cup is, let's see, that's about, ooh, an eighth is about four tablespoons. So four tablespoons, that's about eight tablespoons. Am I correct? So two tablespoons, wow, two tablespoons is the eighth of a cup. And four tablespoons is a quarter cup of oil, just four tablespoons. So many people are easily adding that oil, that amount of oil to their food. And what does that mean? And, you know, in layman's terms, it means that we're putting on a whole bunch of um, additional fat calories that many of us are not burning off. And so if we don't have an awareness, um, it's easily why we're putting on, we may not realize these little leakages. Or, you know, an influx of all these additional calories that we're eating healthier food and salads, but we're putting so much fat, even if you're eating um, living foods or, or raw vegan foods, we're eating so much um, extra um, calories on these pretty plates that you just, it's not that much exercise in the world. So just some kind of awareness and figuring out how to balance out the flavors and food goes um, a long way. So... This I mostly use on my, my skin. Different members of your family with different um, palates. Some may still be at a, a point to use uh, more ol olive oil. So it's just a good practice sometimes to just to start to become aware of how much it is that your body needs. Your son's needs or a child's needs may be different from yours as a, um, a woman that's either... Um, preparing to give chill, uh, to breastfeed or if she's in breastfeeding mode, if somebody uh, has more muscle because they're very um, physically um, active, you know, all of those different things. We can all be eating the same food, but they can be in slightly different portions. And a lot of that's going to depend on your palate, um, your habits, and also the results that you're looking for. So that's one of the good reasons to use a coach. And let's not get it twisted. Even though as a chef, somebody that's worked in a holistic health field, um, also as a, a personal trainer for many years, I have always had different kinds of coaches, not because I don't know what I'm doing, but always like, even if you think of Olympians, they have coaches from season to season. They may be um, working or not, maybe they're working all four years straight to get that opportunity to compete at a world-class level. They're training for four years. So if they're looking to go to the next Olympics, 
it's not because they're not, um, they don't have a level of excellence, but they're looking to get to another level of excellence and another level of result. So um, having coaches is actually, um, it's, all, it's always a wonderful investment, at least something I found and I still find. Always have a coach in my back pocket. So I'm going to crack a coconut. And um, different folks will crack coconuts different ways, depending on how their grandma showed them. So my grandmother did it with a hammer. Some people will use bang two coconuts together. Some people will bang the coconut on the ground or use a brick <laughs> or something. So um, my grandma just used to crack it in her hand. So that's how I'm joined to, to do it. Um, I've also used a cleaver, the back of a cleaver. So you have to be very, very careful with young people. Sometimes they'll come later. They'll sneak in the food prep area um, or the kitchen and they'll try to mimic something. You don't want anybody to get hurt with a hammer or a knife or a cleaver. So young people need to be closely um monitor it. And I'm actually working with several different kinds of coconuts. This actually came from a younger coconut, not a jelly coconut, but definitely um, not as old as um, this one or not as mature. All right. So I like to hold the coconut right here in my hand and I like to crack it uh, or hit it right around here. If that makes sense. I'm going to hit it. Right. And I can hear when I crack it, once it's, um, it's broken, and I'll just tap it around until I can see a little crack. It's going right around the whole circumference of it. And then it's not hard at all. See, you may need to rinse it. And this is a fresh one, so I'm always looking at the color inside. And I'm big on smelling the food. And I like to say, this is how you learn. This is one thing I learned so much just sitting um, at the table around my grandmother and helping her um, chop coconut and seasoning and roll pennies to put in a, um, a savings account. So um, I learned so much from just being around her. So I'm always look also looking at the color of the coconut to make sure that it's not discolored or there's no fur or mold inside or any um, purple or red colors because that's usually a sign of, um, of bacteria that is not a good coconut. And actually, just three of the mature coconuts, this is not even a jelly coconut, which the jelly coconut doesn't have a mature thick meat like this. It's just like a, um, it's like a jelly texture. It's very, um, almost translucent. So this is actually just from water from three coconuts, three mature coconuts. And with the mature coconuts, you definitely want to smell them to make sure that you don't have rancid water. Let's say if I uh, get water from one coconut and that's good, if I don't smell the next one, I can contaminate all this water if I just quickly add it and I didn't, I didn't check it first. So I'm going to take a little, usually I like to strain it. Uh, there's my other little strainer. So I have several purposes for strainers in here. And I'm just going to, still some fiber will get in it, but I want to strain off of, I don't know if you can see that, most of the fiber that's in there, I want to strain that off of my coconut. A lot of the hair from the coconut. See all of that? I don't want that inside my coconut water. And so I can use this coconut water. I can just chill it and drink it. And usually I find that this is coconut is not as sweet as some of the um, water coconuts or the jelly coconuts. But then sometimes you can get a, a really a sweet one. So I'll put this in the refrigerator to chill. I can use that in other different types of um, rep recipes or dishes, you know. And again, that really thanks makes me think of my grandmother because um, they didn't really waste stuff. They took one ingredient and used it for different things which is um, really appeals to me, right? I think it definitely cuts down um, on your um, expenses, right? And you're also getting, you get to be very creative, which is actually a lot of fun to me. So feel free to send your young folks over here because I love to have um, young people in the, in the kitchen with me. You know, prepare food, that's how I learned from my grandma. So it's easy to crack the coconut. I've just put the water um, to the side. Um, I didn't hurt my hand or my, or my wrist. So make sure you don't have a really sharp um, hammer. And this is a very nice uh, heavy duty hammer. So I use a hammer for a lot of different um, purposes. And so now the other part is gonna be taking the coconut meat out of the shell. And there's different ways you can do that. So the way my grandma used to do it, and this is where you really want to um, pay attention what you're, what you're doing. Don't be so much at dancing around, even though I like to dance in the in the kitchen, that you're not paying attention and you cut yourself. So a knife that's not super um, sharp, maybe not a steak knife, 
And then um, for a little added um, grip and protection, you can fold the dish towel over and put the coconut um, inside of your hand. And then I'm gonna take the knife and go around the perimeter. Now, sometimes you can get lucky and the whole thing can pop out and sometimes you'll really have to shimmy inside of the, um, the coconut to get the meat out. That's one way to get it out. Then there's this other little tool that I have, which can be a little, a uh, little more safe. It's not really sharp, but this can go um, around. Shimmy. I find it's a little harder to slide in, but you once you shimmy it around the coconut here on the inside, you can start to get the meat out. And then also another option is to um, take the hammer and just again be careful. Or you can use the towel again. And I can crack this up into smaller pieces and then shimmy the meat around that way. So sometimes different pieces will fly off. And then when I was coming up, it was always a lot of fun when grandma, my grandma let me get the uh, little pieces and um, I could munch in those as a snack. But most of it I had to grate up for her bread. So I can take, be careful sometimes if the, some of the pieces of the coconut can, um, of the shell can be very, very hard. So I can break this up into little pieces. And sometimes this is an easier way to get your knife um, inside of the coconut to get the shimmy the pieces out. So to me, spending um, time in the food prep area, um, preparing food is very relaxing. I would even say it's a meditation. I can have a tendency to, to listen to audiobooks um, when I'm in here or dancing or sometimes just quiet and listening to the birds outside. So again, I'm going to take the um, towel, hand towel, and I'm going to put it in my hand. I'm going to shimmy this right around the edges to um, release some of the coconut meat. So make sure you don't have a whole, oh, look at that. That came right out. So see, that wasn't hard at all. Came right out. You can also take pieces of the coconut shell and save them, young people, and you file this to make jewelry for a business. Again, that's um, uh, being really um, resourceful. Or you can use it as a soap dish, or you can use this to um, put earrings in, right? Coconut shell has lots of different uses. Sometimes I'll take the coconut shell and look, use them for little bowls and to serve food in. Look at that. Came right out. Voila! So let's try this tool. All right, one of my little coconut tools. But you don't have to go out and buy a whole lot of equipment. So you see that slid, this slid right underneath the coconut, the shape of it. And it's not super sharp. So this may be a little safer for, um, for children. So you kind of just shimmy it. You kind of just shimmy it underneath. Look at that. I'm in luck today. It's coming out easy today. <laughs> And look at that, it's nice and clean in half. So I'm gonna take this coconut, um, these coconut uh, out of the shell. And then I have endless possibilities of what I can do with this. So sometimes folks are like, oh, don't you eat any meat? And I was like, yeah, I eat meat. I eat, um, or do you eat meat? And I say, yeah, solo um, comer um, carne de coco, the meat of the coco. Carne de aguacate y carne de lentejas, right? Lentils, avocado, um, coconut. So those are the meats that I'm eating. So I like to say yes. Uh, mom back in the day told me, always tell your children, tell people yes. But the context of I do, so we're not be, being divisive with the food. I eat meat, but it's the meat I'm eating. It's coming from the coconut, um, the avocado, the lentils, and different things. There are plenty of sources in the plant kingdom that have um, protein as well as other nutrients that fight cancer. I've had um, some clients that were just down in coconut oil um, to really fortify their brains as they were very um, anxious about getting al Alzheimer's disease. So you tell me what you think, where am I gonna get the most um, fresh living nutrition from? The coconut oil that's on a shelf or fresh coconut cream and the oil that has all the other nutrients that are intact. So I think it's a very simple approach to the food so we don't make it overly complicated and get too, 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 too much in the head, you know? And um, 
And then you definitely get a whole nother respect um, for your food when you're preparing it fresh. Now, I do understand many people um, have a busy um, schedule. So after a while, you can find and you do eventually find a rhythm with certain things to prepare because um, to prepare when, what to prepare when. Because um, this food is not meant to last for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. That's part of the reason that it's whole living food and living nutrition at a cellular level. It's not food that's been sitting on a shelf um, for years indefinitely, right? We want to eat food that can go bad, right? But we know that the food is fresh inside of our, our body. That's a good sign. If food doesn't rot, um, that usually means it has something equivalent of, uh, you can kind of think of like an embalming fluid, a preservative. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's high um, in nutrition because, as we know, a lot of the nutri nutrients are very sensitive to heat and light, just kind of like if you think of, a, of an apple, and they oxidize. So that's a, a, a great and a beneficial distinction of whole living foods. I'm not saying that the food um, has a mama and a, a papa and it's just crying and there's, there's bloodshed. Um, here, the focus is food that's more, um, it's, it's, it's peaceful. Again, it's peaceful to your own brain and body temple as well as that of other creatures. So I'm going to go ahead and, and crack this. And I'm also, you know, I'm always experimenting with different types of um, recipes. And you can check out um, the um, Whole Living Foods in the Hood with menus to fit your budget. Um, you can find that on the body-culinary um, website as well as... Um, Natural beauty, no products. Love your own hair and skin. It is cruelty free, um, and it is vegan, meaning that there's no animal products there. But I do put the living foods that I eat on my hair and my skin. And I've been known to take a lot of the coconut cream. i um, also put that on my skin, which really smells like a, a, a treat. And um, that's how um, my skin got clear. Keep in mind that as you eat more whole living foods. This food is going to push a lot of the junk that's in your system in a very natural way. It's going to push it out. It's going to stimulate peristalsis, so the movement of your cola, your colon, and the little villi, the little hair-like, um, uh, little hair-like things inside of your colon that move the food along, right? That usually will get very clogged up, and so then they can't move, right? Eating the food that has a um, life force, just like you have life force, you're alive. The whole living foods have um, life force in them. And it doesn't have to be super um, complicated. Uh, I'm never encouraging people to necessarily go out and prioritize buying a lot of um, equipment or um, a lot of supplements. Um, ideally, most of our uh, nutrition should be coming from uh, the fresh whole food. So you will develop a rhythm of um, what things can uh, last for a few days and what things you'll make um, in slightly bigger servings. And as you're preparing food, for instance, um, if you put some away for another few servings away for later in the day or for other family members, just like with anything else, and just really take it so a bit of a learning curve so that we can just reintroduce using the whole fresh plant ingredients. But it's no more than learning, people learning to prepare um, uh, animal flesh. Right, and so you don't require as much um, cleanup or um, as many detergents, and most importantly, we're not taxing um, the brain and the organs, the kidney, the liver, the spleen, the sexual organs, with all these substances masquerading as food um, that don't pass out of the body easily. And if we have all these things piling up in the body, that's growth. That's the things that bacteria um, can grow onto. You know, we know one of the most beneficial things in the whole food is the fiber. So early when we were looking at that oil, we know that um, there's no fiber in it. You know, it's 100% fat. Where this is not 100% fat, this still has um, water and, um, and fiber in it as a whole food. So I just wanted to share with you all the joy of opening coconuts. It is a staple. I have several different types of coconuts. Let me see if I can grab you another coconut so that you can see really quick. One second. So we got all right. So this is another coconut. Oops. This is another coconut here. And um, this particular coconut is um, it's younger than the mature one that I showed you. So I don't know if I have a little picture. Hold on. Let's clip this on. 
Yeah, so this one is a whole nother texture of coconut. It has a lot of weight and this has a lot of water on it. So this is a mature coconut with much thicker meat and this is more like a, um, a water coconut. And then there are some, um, as I mentioned earlier, that a jelly coconut where the meat is even thinner um, than this. And I find this coconut and this coconut give me two different um, textures of coconut milk and coconut cream. So I, I'm always really excited to work with all the different types of legumes that I can sprout or all the different types of um, coconuts to see um, what's the difference, what's the difference in the taste and um, how I can manipulate them and, and be creative with them in recipes. But both of these give me really, really good um, coconut water. So sometimes there are smaller coconuts than this that are darker green. There are different varieties of coconut trees. There are dwarf coconut trees that only grow but so tall. Um, there are different species of, of coconuts. So they give you um, different water, but they are packed full of nutrition. So um, this is by no means low fat. It's a real food with real fat. Um, I actually eat plenty of fat. Um, that being said, a balance with living foods is not to overdose on fats because we're looking to feel satiated or um, numb down or feel the heavy feeling of weighty foods when we have, uh, we're choosing to eliminate the heavier animal flesh proteins and replace them with plant proteins. So it's just a, a learning curve. Um, it's not impossible, it's not hard um, to learn, but those are two of the coconuts. And then the jelly coconuts, the meat is, um, is much more um, loose and jelly-like and even translucent. Those usually will have more water and a much more flexible um, kind of meat inside. The jelly coconuts I would not use, um, I wouldn't use for water. Excuse me, not for water. I wouldn't use those for the meat. Well, I'll eat that meat, but I wouldn't use that meat for recipes. If anything, you can blend it as a shake, but it's so loose and translucent, you usually just wanna eat that um, right there. So these are great to snack on. I mean, as I look at the food, I usually can look at food and I can think of kind of like art, like a palette. I can think of all so many different things like, oh, I want to make this and I want to make that. So it's actually a joy and it's a lot of fun for me to create different types of dishes. And I get a lot of joy out of sharing that with um, family members and friends and clients. So hope you got some insight on some different things you can use to open a coconut. Do be careful. Safety comes first inside of the, uh, the food prep area of the kitchen. Actually, if you're in a professional kitchen, one of the first things that you learn is, um, is safety. So do be careful and not put sharp knives inside the sink because if you have other people that come behind you or sometimes you may not remember and stick your hand inside the sink uh, as you're moving quickly and if the blade is up like this or it's facing you, um, you know, that's no bueno. That's not a, a good thing. So you want to stay safe, right? And then also young people, if they're watching, are picking up on our habits. So it's good to clean as you go. Right now I have a lot of stuff here, but I'm usually cleaning as I go. It's particularly if you don't have a really large um, professional kitchen or if you have other people that are moving in the food prep area with you. And it's good to have a hammer. Every sister guy, every, every sister got to have a hammer because at some point you're going to need to, to hammer a nail or to crack uh, a coconut. So uh, do subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up if you um, enjoyed the content. I love to hear um, feedback from you. Do check out the puppet series, Sister Butterfly and Sister Monkey Learn to Eat Better. So there are about 10 free episodes on this um, channel. Hit the notification bell so you can be uh, notified whenever I go live or I put um, new videos up. Um, from time to time, I have so much footage to edit, but there's so much to do in the garden. I have so many chores and tasks to do. And then sometimes I, I got riding to do. So I'm going to be going live because then I'm not so tempted to make it super duper perfect. And I can continue to provide you with um, great content. If you're interested in coaching in a natural lifestyle, if you want to know how to really um, perfect the art of balancing out your food with nutrition to really ensure that you're getting all the nutrients, the calcium, the protein, if you're exercising more, it's totally possible to get all your nutrients um, plant-based and without using so much processed um, foods and getting too much omega-6s, right? So um, that can also uh, drive many people's food bill up because they're buying so many products out of the store because they may not feel like they have the time or they may not know how to manipulate the fresh whole living ingredient. So that's my specialty and it's a lot of fun. I've been doing it um, for several decades. So everything to do with um, food, fitness. Also as a mother, I totally get it um, in terms of 
You need quite often the time that you could be traveling to and from the gym. While I also have gotten great results in the gym and train people in the gym, there are many women, I would say more than not, that don't have access to a gym facility. So you can do a lot with a very, very um, small space with limited to no equipment in your body weight consistently, even if you're traveling. So um, do hit me up if you're interested. Um, if you'll, I'm sure you'll learn a lot if you'd like to be coached by me. Um, you can reach me at info at body-culinary.com. Uh, do also follow the Instagram um, page and do check out the Etsy shop with the plant milk bags and the shirts, your stomach is not a graveyard. Get your nutrition right and your body tight. Um, stomach's not a graveyard. And what was the other one? Oh, fruits and vegetables bring us um, together. And I will see you in the next video. So do create a great day on purpose. All right. Take care.